So now I have a neat reminder every time I use that pattern of the time my motor skill said get wrecked. Stay tuned for the end of the video where I'll be sharing how to enter a collector themed plushie giveaway. Hello everybody, I'm Micah and today get ready for something new, fun, and maybe a little demonic because we're stepping back into the demon realm to make the collector from the Owl House. But first we have to pay respects to our commenting overlords, the ones who became the lords of the comment section by finding last video's secret word. Today we thank Cat Jaraz. Your comment turns my world upside down and fills it with glitter and pizza bagels. Now let's get to work. Let's take a look at our main fabrics for today's project. We have a lovely white fur for the hair, which will cause some extra work later on. Then we have this super sweet, wonderful, beautiful purple. Ah, <laughs> that's enough of that. And lastly, there's the regular old beige for the rest of the skin. With that out of the way, let's get cracking. Now, I took a look at last video's stats, and you know what I saw? I saw that you guys are all skipping the actual sewing process just to see the plush at the end. Specifically you, Kelvin. I see your finger moving towards that progress bar. Leave it. And I'll tell you why. That's because hidden somewhere in this video is a secret word. If you leave a comment containing this word in a way that won't instantly let others know it's the secret word, you have a chance of being featured at the beginning of the next video. So keep an ear out for that secret word, because it'll also give you a hint as to what the next plush will be. Moving on to more important things, it's time we cut out the rest of these pieces. With the pure white fur out, this is the time that would be the worst to accidentally stab myself. Which is why this is the exact moment I accidentally stabbed myself and got blood kinda everywhere. Thankfully, it only got on the pattern, so now I have a neat reminder every time I use that pattern of the time my motor skill said get wrecked. Moving on to slightly less stabby parts of the project, I went ahead and started sewing some details on. Now, is this an inopportune time to mention I've been playing a little game with you all since the start of the video? It's called Find the Hootie. Hootie has been hiding all around in this video, and whoever correctly guesses the amount of times he appears will have their comment replied to with a special shout out short here on YouTube. So, happy hootie hunting! As you may know from my previous videos, I forget to add my tags in all the time. Well, not today! Not only did I make the tag well in advance of needing it done, I also got it on the plush before I even pinned the body together. This would honestly be a momentous occasion. And the cherry on top would be the tag is one of my double-sided ones, with my logo on the front and the Owl House logo on the back. All this would be so extremely exciting if it weren't for the fact that the collector wears clothing, which will completely cover the tag. And who wants to bet I did not put a tag in the clothing? I... I do. I need the cash. With my hollow victory partially celebrated and the tag securely attached to the body, we'll move on to both my favorite and least favorite part of the plush making process, the embroidery. Now I love time lapses of embroidery, but the noise and the fact that I'm not the one controlling the machine both kind of freak me out. So you all can stay here while I go hide under my bed until it's done. Is it done? Whew, good. I thought it was gonna explode. Now with one eye done, all I have to do is give my fingers a little snap and we have two happy little eyes ready to go. Next up is the mouth. I went through about a billion different facial expressions for this plush, most of which were just me changing the mouth shape. And eventually I found one that looked okay. But I still have a couple prototype heads left over from what I like to call the war of the faces. Now with the hoop on the face, I can do some slightly more manual machine embroidery around the mouth. Next is the most satisfying part of every project that requires embroidery. It's honestly the best. Because of the face pattern, I had to use some temporary fabric and stitches to get it to fit in my embroidery hoops. So now we have to seam rip all of that off as carefully as possible to not damage the face. Then of course we have some more details to sew on. I know in the show the freckles seem to be dots, but I'm assuming that's for animation purposes, because I've seen what I believe to be an official reference with star freckles that, in my opinion, are much cuter. So of course, I went with the star freckles. Then it was time to move on to the thankfully not covered in blood hair. 
Now let me tell you something about this fur. This fur is probably one of the hardest to work with fabrics I have ever used. It feels fantastic, but that's not why it's hard to work with. And no, it's not because I just wanna keep feeling it instead of working. It's because it's so darn slippery. It's the silkiest, nicest fabric ever, and so it'll never stay in place as I'm sewing. Needles just slip right out. So you have to be extremely careful because if you mess up, which you probably will, recutting the pieces will really cost you. That nice fabric is expensive, which is why it was so absolutely infuriating when I got this entire toupee looking ass thing done only to decide I hated it and needed to redo it in minky fabric. So on I went, redoing over an hour of work once again just to make sure the collector turned out perfect. Or as close to perfect as you can get for only making three prototype heads. Not like my last project that had nine. See, doesn't it look just so much cleaner? No one wants a dirty toupee on their head. Now with the hair finally done, I could move on to sewing the body pieces together. And yes, in case you didn't notice this before, I gave him some stars on his chest just for fun. I think now's a good time to give you the first half of your secret word for today's video. Yes, I said half. You still need to find the other half hiding in the rest of the video somewhere. Your first word half is BL. Good luck. Now we've got the body all sewn together, I need to put the arms on. Now I hate sewing arms on, so I'll just do a little magic instead. Hope we don't run out at some inopportune time, but I'm sure that wouldn't happen. As we all know, the universe is very fair and kind. Next, I had to make some extra details, like eyebrows and some last minute wispies for the bottom of the collector's hair. I actually decided after seeing the head together that I wanted to put these wispies in. I technically could have sewn them on by hand afterwards, but it wouldn't look as nice. So once again, I subjected myself to undoing and redoing a bunch of work. That extra work was worth it though, as it turned out looking pretty nice. And now at long last, it was finally time to sew up the body. This step always fools me, without fail. I always think I'm so close to being done when I have like 45 minutes of work left. And that's exactly what happened here. I wanted this plush done before I rewatched the recently released episode two of season three of The Owl House with my mom. And I only had 15 minutes. I genuinely believed I had enough time, but eventually I did get it done. I took video of the stuffing process, but it somehow disappeared. That's okay though, now we have one stuffed happy Nicky boy and it's time to get him dressed. I didn't actually make the pattern for his clothes beforehand like I usually do because I wanted to show off some of my amazing extra strength magic skills. While I do have to take lots of measurements first, this will save me hours of work. One single tap, an entire pattern will appear out of thin air. <clears throat> thin air. What? Ah, man. My magic reserves are out. I guess that means you get to see some of my prototyping process. I start out with a lot of sketching. While some people might do this digitally, it's much easier for me to tell the size of things if I sketch on paper. Using the collector's measurements, I sketched out a custom outfit that should fit him perfectly. Now I know some of these shapes might look a little silly, but take a look at your own clothes. I guarantee you'll notice some pretty weird shapes that you didn't see before. Once that pattern was all done, I went ahead and cut them out of some cheap scrap prototyping fabric to make sure everything would fit correctly. I pinned everything together very similarly to how I would if I were sewing them, but these pieces were destined to fall apart. This is a really important step because I did actually catch some things here that would have messed up the entire outfit later on. With all the pieces pinned onto the collector, I took note of what needed to be changed and adjusted before getting to work on the real deal. Once again, just going through the process of pinning and cutting and pinning and cutting over and over until my fingers fall off. Real quick note I wanted to add in here is that I literally could not find the right color in the other fabric for these edge pieces. I was about to give up until I saw right on an end cap this silky fabric in the exact color I needed. And I am so glad I got it. The silk at the end of his sleeves gives it a very baby blanket vibe and it's just perfect. And now it's time to get sewing. For anyone out there watching who might be interested in sewing, here's a quick tip for you. Check the stretch of the fabric before you buy it. Patterns to look right have to use fabric with a very specific stretch. This fabric I used for the main outfit bits is extremely stretchy and honestly should only be used for things like squishmallows or flowy clothing. Nothing that needs a solid shape. 
Next up, the part of the project that melted my brain. I had to cut out and sew on about a million little stars onto this guy's hat. And to save you from the monotony of this task, we'll just skip right along into the slightly more interesting part where I do the same thing but a little bit bigger. And this part's even more fun because it's finally something that's not technically a star. Finally, it was time to sew the final seams on the onesie. This process took longer than I would have liked because I had to keep switching thread colors. Curse, Curse you, you multicolored multi outfits! outfits! I had to turn his little hat right side too, and we were just about ready to pack up for hand sewing down. We have our white thread, lilac thread, tan thread, and dark purple thread. We can't forget about his little booties, accessory pieces, and the cute little onesie. Now we're off to hand sewing town. I know it may seem kind of silly that he has his hat on but not the onesie, but there's a good reason for that. His hat will be sewn on and his outfit will not be. Plus he has a giant gaping hole in his back that I needed to sew up first. I also had to sew down some of his hair. I wanted some of it to be movable but not by much. So I sewed down the pieces on the sides about halfway and did a lot of little tacks up where the pieces connect to the bangs. And now it's time for the glamour shots. Thank you all so much for watching. Real quick before I go, I wanted to let you know that I started a Patreon, and to kick it off, I'm doing a giveaway of this collector-inspired pixie for the giveaway tiers. Other benefits include monthly coloring pages, phone backgrounds, and live sewing advice. Make sure you check out the description for more Patreon info. Another fun development, I redid my sewing area. Now it looks all nice and sleek. So future videos should be much nicer. Oh, and don't think I forgot. The last half of the secret word is U-E. And don't forget to comment your guess on how many times Hootie showed up in the video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.